things. I would like to just sit up here and talk, but what did the father have to say? And it was in a couple conversations that I had that the word authority came up. Authority, what is it to walk in one's authority? What is it to, to be in our own authority? What is it to walk in the authority of the Most High? I'm gonna jump over to Proverbs 18, chapter 18. Proverbs chapter, uh, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10. The name of the Most High is a strong tower and righteous, the righteous runneth to it and is safe. See, there's some things to authority. When, when we're talking about our authority, we have to first be fully convinced of who we are. We have to know who we are. We look to the, to the Messiah, the Mashiach Yahushua. He was walking in his authority. Demons trembled when they saw him walking because he knew who he came from. He knew who he was. He knew why he was there. And he knew the authority he was given. He knew that he had power over demonic entities that they had no the power no power over him so he had to be thoroughly convinced completely convinced of who he was when you look at when you look at the the word authority being translated from the Hebrew right it means positiveness positiveness to know positively without the shadow of a doubt to have the strength in that if we were to know who we were completely and the world could not change our minds of anything else, then we would have the authority to say, who are you to say that I can't worship on a Shabbat? Who are you to say that I am not the child of the Most High? I didn't give you permission to tell that lie, right? I would not allow that in my presence because the authority that the Father gave me is to be able to organize my environment under his order. Keyword, his order. So we gotta go back to his teachings and his instructions, right? There's, there's, there's three key things that we need in order to walk in our authority. One thing is keeping God's instructions. You know, a lot of people say keep his laws. We don't normally have a good relationship with the term law. You know, people say, oh, the law outside. That don't feel good right but coming from the hebrew though the, that's that's not the the best representative of the hebrew term it's instructions nobody will ever get uh, a a car or or a bed and look to put it together without the instructions we go looking for the instructions even though we can figure some things out when we hit a hard spot let me go to the instructions i i thought i had this but clearly i don't look like i'm missing some screws right second thing being fully convinced and accepting of who we are. That means our culture, that means our bloodline, that means our DNA, how we have gotten here, the reason why we've gotten here. I could go on and on, but a lot of things I'm saying have already been said, hallelujah. The third thing, cultivating an environment of spiritual submission and obedience to the will of Yah. Cultivating an environment of spiritual submission and obedience to the will of Yah. That's the fasting. That's the praying. That's the being, uh, having our mind renewed daily with this word, right? I'm going to get an example of authority real quick. I only got a few more. I'm not going to be long before you. I'm going to switch over to the book of Matthew. chapter 7 and verse 28 well you know what I'm gonna come back to that one I'm gonna go to Matthew chapter 8 and verse 7 I want to get a, a, a quick look at this authority and Yahushua said unto him I will come and heal him this is when the centurion man was coming to the Messiah saying, hey, I have a servant in my house. Would you come and heal him? Right? Verse 8. The centurion uh, answered and said, 
I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go. And to he, and he goes, and to another come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he will do it. So he went to the Messiah and asked him, could he speak, could he heal my servant, knowing that his house was not in order. And when the Messiah said, okay, well, yeah, I will come and heal your servant, he said, no, I understand that you are under authority. You were sent by a higher power. I understand this because I myself is under authority. See, authority can only come from a position above you. It can't come laterally and it can't come from beneath. True authority can only come from above you. So he said, I recognize your authority because I was given authority also. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. The Messiah came down as a representative, as a demonstration to the authority that we have when we submit to the Most High's instructions. Hallelujah. And I'm going to end with this. Proverbs 29. Verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, Proverbs 29 verse 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. I just went through those scriptures back and forth because I just wanted to lay a foundation to say this. When we come into the understanding of that we were given authority because we were put in a position on this earth that only the Father gave to us and that no man can take away from us, that we also have the same authority within us to speak to the winds and they go to peace the same way the Mashiach has, where we can speak to the situations in our life and tell them to do what we say do because we was given that rule and authority from the Most High where we can speak to different parts of our body and say, you know what, that part of my thinking does not reflect who I was sent by or who I represent. When we take on the name of the Most High Yahuwah, that there's a characteristic that follows that. And with those characteristics come an authority over the waters, over the airs, that he put us here in the beginning in Genesis to have rule and dominion over all these things. And that now, all of nature, all the peoples around the world that is looking for a move of the Most High is waiting for His people to stand up and take authority? To stand up in their authority? This day I pray that everyone in here, hallelujah, everyone in here are able to open themselves up, to open their minds up to who we are in the most highest perspectives. That we can have our mind renewed daily. That we don't have our mind conformed to the way this world is, but that we renew our mind daily to understand why we are here. The most high just wanted different reflections of himself. He wanted his character, another person that represented him, that looked like him with his authority putting the earth in his order. So this day, and then we, well, let's go ahead and bow our heads, clear our minds for prayer real quick. Abba Yah, in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach, we thank you for your Shabbat day. That is an everlasting sign between us and you. Abba Yahuwah, we thank you for your word and your truth going out. Abba, we know that we say that we are in the truth, yet we must examine ourselves daily to see whether the truth is in us. For far too long we have let the traditions of this world proclaim that it is the truth in our eyesight, Abba Yahuwah. We ask that you bring all those things out of our spirit, that we're able to put those things aside that are not representative of who you are and who we are in you, Abba. That we're able to walk in our full authority, having full understanding, being fully convinced of who we are in you, of your power, of your mind, of your grace knowing that your instructions, the Torah, that your instructions is our way out of it, Abba. We know that we were put in this position 
because our forefathers was disobedient to the covenant that we have with you, Abba Yahuwah. Let us this day forth understand that covenant, rehearse that covenant, learn that covenant, be good stewards of that covenant, and walk out that covenant all the days of our lives that your name be made awesome in this earth, Abba Yahuwah. Uh, but we thank you for that people from all around the country could come together in one room speaking the truth, knowing the truth and give you thanks, give you all the glory, Abba. This day, let us humble our hearts and raise your name in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach that all this information goes forth, Abba Yahuwah, that those who are sick and shut in are able to be healed from their illnesses, Abba. We know that in your word, you have given us the instructions on how to use all the herbs of the of the earth, Abba Yahuwah, that when you created the earth and you created us, Abba, that there was nothing lacking in us, that there was nothing lacking in the earth, Abba. Grant us wisdom to know how to use the substances that you have created for us, Abba, that we may have healing in the body, that we may have healing in our mind, that we may have healing in our heart. Abba, give us the strength to feed the people bread that fed us rocks. That we can love those people that didn't know how to love us. That we can truly go within ourselves, have a battle within ourselves and come out victorious because our Ruach have successfully ruled over our flesh. Let us proclaim your name, your power and your authority all the days of our lives, Abba everywhere we go let your image reign in every circumstance in life let your grace your strength your understanding your will let that prevail Abba not our feelings and our emotions of the circumstances but let your truth prevail for all of our generations Abba we know that in Exodus where you was giving us the Decalogue that you made a covenant with us that you will visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third or fourth generation of those that hate you but also that you will show mercy unto thousands of those that love you and keep your instructions Abba let every person under the sound of my voice today take on living inside of your instructions that we can learn how to live close to you intimately with you Abba Yahuwah that you can bring us in a new place that you can restore us from where we are to where we were always destined to be that the love that you have for us and that we have for you can be demonstrated in hundreds of generations behind us let our presence and where we are right now be the end to sin in each person's genetic code for all the generations out here who will let us love you the way that we are destined to love you. Wake your people up the way they were destined to wake up. That your word placed inside of us did not return unto you void, Abba Yahuwah. We thank you and praise you for all these things and so much more that we can't even articulate right now in this moment, Abba. We thank you and praise you in the name and in the authority and the honor of our Savior, our Mashiach, your son, our kinsman redeemer, Yahusha Hamashiach. Hallelujah. 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 One more time, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
It is not just the things that we have experienced on these lands. We have been through seven captivities. Seven after the Mashiach has went to the cross. Our people only know captivity. Do you understand that? From Egypt to now, we have been in captivity over and over and over again. We have constantly been in someone else's culture, learning how to eat, think, drink, move, build our families and our community by other nations. And the Most High is saying, now you're my hidden ones. Hallelujah. We have been planted, hallelujah, we have been planted in every nation, and it almost looked like a story of defeat, but it's not so, it is not so, because at the appointed time, oh, he's going to be our deliverer again. Yeah.
prayers for me. Set your feet on the pathway.
Y'all sound real good in here. Now sing it like you really want to be a sanctuary. I want to do it.
there's only one of you, yeah. There is none beside you. You're well over you. There is only one Yahoo. There is only one of you, yeah. There is none beside you. There is only one Yahoo. There is only one of you, yeah. There is none beside you. There is only one Yahoo. There is only one of you, yeah. There is none beside you.
Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Is he worthy of our praise? Is he worthy of all glory? Is he worthy of honor? Y'all don't sound like it. Has he delivered anybody in here? Has he ever set somebody free in here? Have, everybody, have anybody ever been in bondage and now you're free? If that's you, somebody give him some praise in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the Most High Yah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. For those who recognize that today is unlike any other day. It's the only day with a name that he blessed and hallowed. The Shabbat. It's a sign for him and his people. It's to say that we are his and he can say those are mine because they guard and they keep the Shabbat. Hallelujah. My assignment for the day is to talk about the law a little bit. I don't know about you, but for a long time, I was taught and used to teach that the law is done away with. We not up under the law anymore. So is the law done away with? Is that a misinterpretation of scriptures? So misinterpret misinterpretation of scripture versus what the scripture really says. That's what I'm going to talk about just for a minute. Because if we don't get an understanding of what this means, it can throw your whole theology off. It can throw your whole walk off. Hallelujah. Now, let's define law. Law comes from, it means Torah. Strong's H8451. It comes from 3384. It's a precept, a statute especially the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments or the Pentateuch which is the first five books and so it says it comes from 3384 so 3384 is Yahweh that's where we get the word more which means teacher it means to flow as water to point out as if by aiming the finger to teach, direct, inform, instruct, teacher and teaching. All these words encompass what the law is. So basically the law is all the instructions of the Most High. When you break it down to its very last compound, it's just the instructions of the Most High that He's given us. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask the question again. Is the law done away with? So, why would he do away with something that he has written in our hearts? So, we're going to go to Jer Jeremiah 31, 33. It says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahuwah. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and I will be their Elohim or God and they shall be my people so again why would he do away with something that he chose to write and inscribe on our hearts hallelujah first John three and four it says whoever whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law for sin is the transgression of the law so that's the biblical definition of sin sin is transgression of the law Romans 4 and 15 it says because the law worketh wrath for where no law is there's no transgression in other words if the law is done away with 
lawlessness runs rampant? What is the barometer to keep us from sinning? For sin is the transgression of the law. But if you do away with the law, where's sin? Y'all follow me? I'm trying to make it real simple. Hallelujah. Romans 10 and 4 says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. That's, that, that's the scripture a lot of time that is used to defend that the law is done away with. So let's read it again. It says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe. Well, first of all, we have to define that word in. That word in the Greek is telos, Strong's 5056. And it means to set out for a definite point or goal, the aim or end purpose, not termination let me read that again it says to set out a definite point or goal the aim or end purpose not termination so in other words what Romans 10 4 was saying is that Mashiach or Christ is the goal he's the aim or the purpose of the law hallelujah, hallelujah. glory and just following along that same line of logic for those who think the law is done away with because that word in, same word used in James 5 and 11. It says, Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end, same word, G5056, telos, of Yahuwah. So does that mean? Yahuwah has ended? It can't mean that. So basically what I want to say, if we, if we only reading from an English standpoint, we already far behind. We need to find out what these words mean and stop regurgitating what we've been taught and what we've been learned over the years. Hallelujah. It says, and have seen the end of Yahuwah. We know that's not right. So question, has Yahuwah, a God, ended? Of course not. But in context, it means we have seen the purpose of Yahuwah. We getting this? Romans 3 and 20. It's a couple of more scriptures that they will bring up. It says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, Therefore, no flesh shall be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And that same word is used in Galatians 3 and 10. It says, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, cursed is every man that continueth not in all the things which are written in the book of the law and to do them. Now, of and by in this text are defined as ek, ex or ek, ek, and that's strong G1537, and that's defined as outside of. So when you plug the true meaning of of and by in these verses, it reads like, therefore, outside of the deeds of the law there shall be no flesh justified in his sight for by the law is knowledge of sin in Galatians 3 and, 20, 3 and 10 it says for as many are as outside of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written cursed is everyone that continueth not in the things which are written in the book of the law to do them so you see, when we, when we truly understand the definition, the meaning, the words, how it changed the whole complexion of the scripture, it changed the meaning. It's not saying what we were taught. Well, I'm going to speak for myself. What I was taught all those years, it was saying, it's not saying that. 
Glory to the Most High. Did we, did we know that Paul actually talked about seven different types of laws? The law of Yah. You can reference that in Romans 7, 22. The law of sin. You can reference that in Romans 7, 23. The law of sin and death. Romans 8, 22. The law of spirit of life. In that same verse, the law of faith, Romans 3 and 27. The law of righteousness, Romans 9 and 31. And the law of Christ, Galatians 6 and 2. Last question. So which one of the law is done away with? I'll wait. Which law is done away with? Is that simple enough for us to grasp and understand? Because if you're anything like me, I need you to break things down like I'm a kindergarten so I can grasp it. And so I ain't trying to be all deep and intellectual up here. I just want you to get, get it like I got it. It's, it's our desire to wake up Jacob. Wake up Jacob. The law is not done away with. The law is the most high instructions for us to live righteous. To, it's his instructions for us to approach him. It's his, his instruction for us to worship him. It's all encompassing of all that. So how can that be done away with? Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom to all. Sherry isn't here uh, in the room right now. But can we give her a, a, a hand clap? <laughs> Scripture says that uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. And when we look at it, we look like we look as if it takes either or. But true obedience actually takes sacrifice. So what Sherry did was sacrifice her own finances so that this can come together. Reverend Ja Hurst, for those that didn't get to hear him speak earlier, you need to. I know we're used to hearing our, our mores talk and our elders, but Reverend Hurst, I never heard someone put the scripture the way that he did. That he's on our side. That he literally, he has, he has two foot in the door, he don't even know it yet. He talked about that black history is the Bible, or the Bible is black history. For those that are kind of on the fence, it's saying, well, I'm, I'll, I know about this Hebrew stuff or this Hebrew Israelite movement or whatever. That's scripture. That's Abba's story. That's God's story. If you have not heard what he said, Reverend John Hurst, please rewind it, catch a replay of it, send it to a family or a friend. That's going to that's gonna help get them in the door of what we are already in. For those that are, that are listening that do not know who I am, I want to give a couple nuggets just for credibility. If you get your phone out right now and Google International Decade of African people, 
of African descent, I'm sorry, international decade of people of African descent, when you look it up, the United Nations have put out this proposal. The proposal is from 2015 to 2024 that they actually want to help us with recognition, justice, and development for our people. Now, the crazy part about all of this is it ends this year. In other words, they put something in place that said, we want to help y'all, but y'all got to help yourself first. In other words, y'all need to get your house in order and then come see us so that we can help. Now, I know our ultimate help is Abba, but Abba strategically places things that we could never imagine. That help from the UN actually ends December 31st, 2024 at 11.59 this year. Look it up. Look it up. What you brought out earlier about Russia opening up, it's amazing what Abba is doing. And we are living in a time that he has never done it before. A time that he has appointed. His appointed times. Diaz, put on my, uh, my slide real quick. Because I want to try to establish some type of credibility with people that, that don't know me. Not that it's about me, but hopefully that they will listen. If you take your phone out or do it later on, go to 1582 October and see how they play with the time, how they took out 10 days. What's significant about that? What does that mean? It's the same way that it's significant to the fact that daylight saving time. Go look at Daniel 7.25. The people will look to think, to change the laws and the times. To my Hebrews, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. To everybody else, Happy New Year. Why are we saying that in, in March? Why are we saying that in March? Because guess what? I will always leave crumbs behind. If you Google the Latin number for seven, guess what you go get? Let's do some counting. March, count with me. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Is it back coincident? Or did Abba say I'm going to leave something behind that they know? So again, I say, Happy New Year. This is also what it says in the scripture. For whatever, not some things, not, not a little bit here, a little bit there, but he says, for whatever is hidden shall be revealed. That word shall is a lawful word. It means must. And whatever have been kept secret shall come to light. Oh my goodness. 
I got a question. I really got more than one question, but he proved, Reverend Hurst proved that you only get two days from Good Friday to, to Sunday. The Good Friday, the Good Lie. But I got a question. Did Christ observe Pesach or Passover or did he observe Easter? Where's your proof? Matthew 5 or 26 and 18. He said, go to the city to a certain man, he being Yahusha, who the world called Christ, and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep Easter. My, I will keep Passover at your house with my disciples. Let's try to make it make sense. Will Abba send someone that represents him to live out something only to do away with it after he dies? He said, I want you to go there, live it out, and when you finish, it's finished. For those that may be watching online or those uh, that don't have this chart, you can take a screenshot of it. In fact, if you don't have it, you can look on your table and you'll see it on your table. That's very, you need to have it handy. It's going to help with what I have to say. Zephaniah tells that the Most High said that he will bring about a pure language back to his people. What you're looking at is that pure language. We look at, we look at it as ancient and done away with and obsolete. But do you know anything that Abba has put in place, it endures the hand of time. This is his word. I know Sherry, Evangelist Sherry said, this is connecting the dots. As we begin to connect the dots, I want to say follow the dots and see where the dots lead to. The dots go lead to Yah. So what I want to talk about is the importance of his name. Yahuwah. Someone say Yahuwah. Because the world will know Yahuwah's name. I want to take us to some scriptures because we may think his name isn't important. What does it matter? I call him God. Let's see what the Bible says about his name and let's see what, how he feels about it. Because I can call Sherry Mary, but that's not your name. I can call you Susan. That's not your name. Same thing with Abba. It says, he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim the name of Yahuwah before you and be gracious to whom I will be gracious to and I will show mercy who I will show mercy to. Leviticus 18 and 21, and you shall not let any of your seed pass through Molech, neither shall you profane the name of your Elohim or your God I am Yahuwah. Why he got to keep repeating his name? Maybe because it's just that important. Maybe because some people will try to replace his name with something other than his name. Leviticus 19 and 12. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shall you profane the name of your Elohim or your God. I am Yahuwah. 
And I know in your Bible it say, I am the Lord. But when you go back to look to what the original script said, you shall not take the name of Yahuwah Eleheka in vain, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Now that has deep meaning to it. Because your name represents more than just how you spell it or how it's pronounced. He said, don't take my character. Don't take my fame. Don't take my authority. Don't take my reputation. In vain. And then Psalms 68, 3 through 4 says this. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before Yah, their Elohim. Let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto Elohim or God. Sing praises to what? His name. Exalt him that rise upon the heavens by his what? His name. Now your KJV go say Jah. But go back 1500 to 1500 and you'll see that Jay wasn't wasn't even in there and then someone brought out earlier Proverbs 18 and 10 the name of Yahuwah is a strong tower the righteous run to it and they are safe then Joshua this gives us a hint as to what name really means and they said unto El Yahusha for those who didn't know, Joshua and Yahusha, or Jesus, has the same translation. It just is. And it says, we are your servants. And then Yahusha, or Joshua, Joshua, said to them, who are ye, and from which ye come? And they said unto him, from a very far country, your servants, because of the name of Yahuwah for we have heard the fame of him well how did they hear his fame through his name so again name represents the character of that person the fame of that person the reputation of that person the authority of that person. So when Abba gives anybody his name, he's looking for someone that is willing to carry that same authority, that same fame, that same reputation, that same character. This is what Yahusha or who they call Jesus, what he said. John 5, 43 says, I come in my father's name. Why does his name keep coming up? And you receive me not, but if another shall come in his own name, then you go receive him. Because Jesus and Yahusha don't sound alike. Matter of fact, Jesus, when you tr go, go to Latin, Jesus, Hell Zeus. Look it up. So then Yahusha, whom the world called Christ, answered and says, I told you and you believe me not, but the works that I do, I do it in my Father's name. And then they bear witness of me. Go look at the Hebrew translation right now. God is only a title. Sister, bruh, unk, cuz, friend, doctor, lawyer, all titles. God, all titles. Do you not think if you have a name, your God didn't have a name? What sense do that make? So God's name is Yahuwah. 
His son name was Yahusha. And then that tribe of Judah that Reverend Hurst talked about was Yehuda. The similarity is Yahu. Yahua, Yahusha, Yahuda. This is why when we read 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, it says this. If my people, well, who is your people? The ones that are called by my name. Yasharel. If they shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. You mean to tell me ya Abba said that his people are wicked? Because they turn from his ways. Wake up, Jacob. Then, notice the if in the then. Then is only when the if happens first. If the if don't happen, the then ain't gonna happen. And notice that Abba said, I'm not only going to leave you crumbs, but I'm going to sprinkle in people to give you this truth. Stuff you've been scratching your head about that pastor said that ain't really making sense. And when you tried to make sense of it, he said, just listen for the next sermon. Don't study. Wait, wait until I address it. When scriptures say, study to show yourself approved unto Yah, that you be a workman, not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing what? If you still don't believe me, go to uh, slave voyage, uh, slavevoyage.org. Go look at what our people name was and why we still call our people Jemai Yah and Ken Yah and Amari Yah and Shamari Yah. The first one on here is Nehemiah or Nakim Yah, which means what? Consolation of Yah. Then you have what? Zechariah, Yah, which means Yah has remembered. Then you have Obadiah, which means serving Yah. What is the common denominator? Then you have Jeremiah, which means Yah will rise. How about Isaiah? which means Yah has saved. Well, what about Zephaniah, which means Yah hides until the perfect time to reveal? How about Azariah, Yah, or Azariah, Yah has helped? What about Uriah, Yah, the flame of Yah, the light of Yah. How about Hezekiah, yeah. Yah, hidden in plain sight, strengthened of Yah. How about Josiah, Yah, founded of Yah. How about Eli's? Yah or Eliyahu. Yah is Elohim. Yah is God. How about Amaria? Yah said. Said of Yah. How about Morai? Yah. Seen of Yah. How about Abia? Yah is my father. Or either where we get Toby, Tobiah, 
which Yah is good. How about Benaya? Built by Yah. Why do they keep pointing to Yah? So as much as we want to say that it's about us, it's really about I want to read something real quick. There's a book called Introduction to the Old Testament by Bill T. Arnold. It said that we saw in chapter 1 that Yasharel, or Israel name for God, was yod heh wah -Heh, perhaps pronounced Yahweh, or which we know is Yahuwah. For it says at some point early in Yasharel's history, the name for God was considered to be so holy, deemed so sacred and blessed, that it was thought best not to even utter it out loud. But who decided that? It said the scribes who preserved the Hebrew text provided marks and signs for pronunciation in other words, by, but made an exception for the name of Yahuwah. Rather than guide the reader in a way to vocalize the name, they came up with an indigenous way of highlighting the name's importance. They superimposed the signs and marks for a different word, Adonai, or what we call the Lord, over the letters yod heh or Yahuwah. Their suggestion for Jews, re Jews reading the text was simply to say Adonai or my Lord when reading the text out loud instead of actually saying God's name. The Septuagint translation followed this lead frequently using the Greek word Lord or Kyrios to translate Yahuwah. Most of today's English translations also follow this lead using Lord, note that it's in small capital letters, for the sacred name of Yahuwah in the Old Testament. Take a moment now to see the translation you're using handles uh, Genesis 12 and 15. The Lord God, or Yahuwah Elohim, took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden. When you see Lord with small caps, you know that the original Hebrew text was yod heh wah -Heh. So what Mr. Uh, Hurst talked about, that he said you can turn your brain off when you go into the black church. That's sad. Well, so I gave this to me uh, just yesterday. The importance of his image. If you go back to Genesis 1 and 26, it said, And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. That sounds like somebody in dominion or having authority. What we say about the name, it represents his authority. But keep a, keep a look at this, image and likeness. Likeness denotes the, the, the resemblance or the physical characteristics of a person. Boy, you look just like your, your daddy, right? But image is something totally different. LeBron James' sons, they can look like him all they want. But that image, that's a whole different story. Michael Jordan's uh, son didn't live up to his image. He may look like him. You can look like daddy all you want. Let's look at the name, this uh, Strong's 6754. Zelem, Zelem. That's for image. Let's see what that word says from an unused root word meaning to shade. We know it as shadow. When you think of image, think of a shadow. It says a phantom. Anybody know what a phantom is? Does a lot, 
but don't quite get the recognition. You really don't know. Right? Because it's more about the act than it is the person. It says re resemblance, hence a representative or a figure. When the sun is bright and shining, what can you see the most? Your shadow. What is the job of a shadow? To do everything, and it only has one job, to do everything that the actual figure does. Literally, it's to mimic. That's the only job of a shadow. To do what the main figure is doing. That's it. So he said, I'm going to make you in my image and my likeness. I need you to do what I would do. At my house, it's a, it's a rule. When you, when you come in, we, we kick off our shoes. My son, I'm not going to call him out, but he got, he got a habit of breaking that rule. And what I do, guess what I have to do? Even though I made the rule, I got to go by the rule. So the first thing I do when I get home is I kick my shoes off. Because what do I have to be? I have to be example of the rules or the instructions that were set. And then hopefully he can fall in that same shadow. I'm almost done. I'm gonna say it two more times before I'm really almost done. All right. So listen to this. This is this is extremely important. So Genesis five one through three says this. This is the sefer of the generations of Adam. In the day that Elohim created him, in the likeness of Elohim made him, made. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image. And he called his name what? Seth or Sheth, right? Extremely important. Why is it important? Because why would they start the generations of Adam with Seth and not Cain and Abel? Why? That, that, that make you wonder. Why would you start when you know in chapter 4 it talked about he had Cain and Abel? Why they not include it? And then when they did talk about Cain and Abel, they didn't use his image and likeness to describe him. Which leads you to ask a question, what does Seth or Sheth mean? Because remember I told you that name represents authority and character. It says that Seth literally means compensation. Seth means compensation. Compensation is, if I don't get you, give you what you actually deserve or you were looking for, I have to some way try to make it up to you. Adam wasn't who Abba told him to be. So he said, I got a recompense. I got to give, I, was, I got to compensate for something that I wasn't. It literally means a substitute. Which means I wasn't, Cain wasn't, and Abel wasn't, but I need this one to be in the place where I should have been. Because I didn't carry the name, the authority that Abba told me to carry. 
I didn't walk in the image that he told me to walk in. How many of us don't walk in the image that he gave us? Too bad we can't have some Seths. There is no substitution. We too late in the game. You are the substitution. You up next. Let's look at it from the beginning real quick. Deuteronomy 4, 1 through 6. Now therefore hearken or listen, O Israel. Remember, Yasharel is the ones that are his people, the ones that are called by his name. So he's saying, listen, my people, unto the statutes and to the judgments which I teach you to do them, that you may live and go in and possess the land which Yahuwah of your father gives you. You shall not add to the word which I command you. You know why he gave those specific instructions don't add to the word? Because the same thing that Reverend Hurst did when he got up here is all he gave us was the word. That's all we needed. It just haven't been rightly divided. Neither shall you diminish from it that you may guard the commandments What's Ecclesiastes 12 and 13? What's the whole duty of man? Keep his commandments and fear him. That's it. And then it goes on to say, Behold, I have taught you my commandments, judgments, even as Yahuwah commanded me. Now this is Moshe talking to the people. Even as Yah commanded me, I'm going to command you. That means each and every one of us have the same charge that as Abba have commanded us to do, we got to go tell everybody else they must do too. It says, God therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom. This is your understanding. Why are we going to look to the world for wisdom and understanding, getting all type of books on wisdom and everything, when they taking it from the Torah? Here, let me sell you what I've been giving you all this time. It's like you were dumb enough to just listen to whatever I fed you. Now let me sell it to you. When Abba gave it to us for free. And then he said that people will say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. I'm going to breeze through these because Maury LaRue already been over this one. Jeremiah 31, 33 through 34. He says that he will cut a new covenant with who? Yasharel, his people. And he going to put the Torah in our inward parts, in our heart. Ezekiel 36 tells us the same thing. Hebrews 8 and 10, same thing. Let's get to this name real quick. Yasharel. It means the upright or the straight ones of Elohim. Yashar literally means smooth or straight or upright. And all or El, when you break it down, means the strong shepherd or strong authority. Yashar. If you look at, either you took a snapshot of it or you have it on, the, uh, on your table, just tell us what it is, what it means. So Yashar literally means the head of a head person who is strong. Let me make this make sense. The hand of a head person who is strong. I need you to do that. I need you to do this. In other words, somebody that can call shots. A chief, a prince, a ruler. So Shar literally means a strong person or a prince. 
A prince can only come from a what? From a king. Yasharel. This is how you spell Yasharel or Yasharal. Yod, Shin, Resh, Aleph, Lamed. Yod, Shin, Resh, Aleph, Lamed. The Yod would be the Yah in Yasharel. The Shar would literally mean Prince. That's the Shin and the Resh put together. Literally means Prince. And then you have the All, which represents Elohim. Let's put that together. So Yashara or Yasharel literally means the prince of Yah who has power with Elohim. Or either Yah's prince that has power with Elohim. Raise your hand if you think I made that up. What about scripture? Genesis 32 and 28. And he said, your name shall be called no more Jacob, no more Yaakob, but Yasharal. Because he said, for as a prince, have you power with Elohim and with man but look at the kicker, and you prevail. Look at what just happened. He said, the name that I just gave you, it's going to give you power with me and with man. Why is the name so important? Because you don't recognize the name, you will not recognize the power. But the minute you begin to recognize the name, why we skip that part? The first part to a, a true relationships, it actually starts with the name. Hey, how you doing? How can you have a true relationship and you talking about covenant and you don't even know the name of who you in covenant with. I'm going to break this down even further. So if you look at the, the text or the, the little chart that you have, Yod represents the hand. Shin means to press. That's where you get the word Shabbat. It means press back towards the house. Press toward the house of the covenant. So it means to turn. Then you have the Resh. That represents head. And then you have the Olive of Lamed, which represents the strong shepherd, which we know represents Elohim or Yah. So in other words, Yasharal means the hand that turned the head of Elohim. Who has the ability to turn the head of? Let's go back to Genesis 32 and 26. And he said, now he was the Malachim or the angel who people said that, that it was actually him wrestling with God himself. He said, let me go. For the day breaks. Now mind you, this is after he had already popped that thigh out, right? 
Now, normally, if somebody, something is broken, you stop. You wrestling with somebody, some break is like, okay, time out. We not going no further. I just heard something pop, right? But Yaakov said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And it was after that that he gave him that name. Let's go look up this word power. I'm gonna speed. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I mean, I'm really, I'm really there. So the word power in that, that scripture that we looked up. And he said, your name shall no more be called Yaakov, but Yasharel. For as a prince, have you power with Elohim and with man and have prevailed. When I looked that up, that's only in scripture twice. Only two times. You know what happened when you find something in scripture only twice? That is significant. This is in Hosea 12 and 3. And he, he being Yaakov or Jacob, took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with Elohim. We just read the two instances. The one he was wrestling with, people say Elohim, and this one he's wrestling with, man. Both instances, what did he do? He prevailed. What I'm saying is the power that we have is the power to prevail. It has never been a race on this earth who has been through what we have been through and lived to tell about it. That's no glory to us, though. It's only glory to the Father in which whose name we carry. I want to sidetrack real quick. On my arm is vitiligo. I suffer from vitiligo. Changing of the pigment, that's what Dr. Uh, or Reverend Hurst talked about. I believe he, uh, Leviticus 13, correct? When you read it, so, so mind you, when I start getting vitiligo, got on my legs and stuff, when I started getting it, what is going on? And this was right before my awakening. It wasn't until Reverend Hurst got up here that I said, that's what it was for. This moment right here. Never met Reverend Hurst. Only read, met Sherry about four years ago. When you go to read what it is of leprosy, it was a couple different things of what, what leprosy was. One of them was saying that the priest would look very closely at it. Now, if it had a scalp or some red or some irritation, he was considered unclean, go for seven days, get locked up. Come back in seven days. He looked at it again, talked about if the hairs is white and it's more than skin deep and there's a scalp on it, then you still considered unclean. But then he talked about that if some color, some blackness start happening again, you good to go. I started getting dark spots back within the vitiligo.
never once did anything have a scab or a sore or anything of that nature. But I said that to say this. Abba go take us back. Not only to his word, but to our land. The same land that he gave us before. I had to share that. Real quick, Yaakov, this is was interesting to me, but Yaakov also has a meaning to it. Again, so Yo Yaakov is spelled Yod Ayan Kuf Bet. Yod represents hand. Ayan represents experience. Kuf represents behind. And then bet represents inside like a house or a body or a temple, right? So when you put that together, it means the hand that was experienced from behind while still inside. <laughs> Jacob's or Yaakov's name was a reflection of his brother. Because who's filling that, that hand from behind while they are still inside the womb? Esau. When we truly remember and get the significance of name, we'll get the significance of the scripture. And then and only then will we rightly divide the word of truth. All esteem to Abba. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure listening and learning. And I think we have gotten a full spiritual meal this weekend. There's really nothing else to be said, but I just want to say thank you. I want to thank my staff. Some of them here, some of them not here. They really hung in there. And I want to thank you guys for, because you have no idea, you push me to continue. Because when you have programs, you never know the outcome. You don't know who's going to show. And I was out there passing out flyers and, you know, as I say, doing me. But it wasn't work for me. It was something normal because I know who I am. And an evangelist goes out and speaks the word. So I had a chance to get to know my neighbors more and pray. And so that was a blessing. And it gave me a chance to know my family even more, that you all came in strong. So give yourself a hand because you all supported me big time. <laughs> big time. Sister Linda Randall, lady here, wave your hand. That is my assistant, uh, my personal assistant. <laughs> Sister Miller, raise your hand. <laughs> several hats, several hats, several hats. No one knows, this is my dad. Dad, stand up. I look just like him, so you can't miss him. <laughs> But I just want to say thank you so very much because now you guys have given me the encourage to move forward even more. So I know his name is not popular all the time, but he says something about get ready, get ready, get ready. But I'm going to say this. Can you run with me? You guys have a blessed and prosperous Sabbath. We get ready to break bread together. Brother, if you can just put on some nice light music, I'm going to start calling the tables out in just one second. I just want to say thank you. Give yourselves a hand one more time. No, I said give yourself a hand. That's how y'all give yourselves a hand? <laughs> Love on yourself a little bit because, and where's my mother? Ma. Ma. 
Somebody look peep outside, please, and see if you see that little woman who's been running around here. <laughs> Excuse me, brother, you, you new to us. What's your name, brother? Because we want to welcome you. Yes, you cannot come around at a sister's house and not be introduced. That's my sister right here, Gabrielle. That's my oldest sister. What's your name, brother? How did you find out about us? The Flyers? Thank you. Thank you. While Sherry's waiting on her mom, we want to give her a hand again for this uh, function. It was beautifully organized. It was wonderfully done in excellence. Thank you, Sherry. Gabrielle, come on in. This is my mom, guys. This is where a lot of that energy, that push, come from. I'm not going to give her the mic because I'm scared she might tell some of my secrets. Because <laughs> I wasn't always this way. <laughs> Where's my brother? This is his, his uh, place right here that we're in, guys. So it, it is truly a family affair. But like I said, we always uh, are open for our, our families to have many programs. We just getting started. We're just getting started. I know I'm fairly new to the uh, Great Awakening family, so don't push me too fast. I'm still on that six months trying to, you know, make sure I understand how everything is. This is my baby brother. This is his, this is his place right here, guys. And our, I introduced them. Come on up. Don't be afraid. Y'all ain't been afraid since then. They've been pushing me and fussing with me. We don't change some things around. <laughs> Dad, where are you? Because they taking pictures of us. I told you they would, so they gonna follow, they gonna know who you are. <laughs> but this is my family, guys. Yes, I look just like him. Please don't say nothing else about that. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you again, and we're about to, uh, oh, okay, we're taking a photo. Wait a minute. I am an inquired taste. <laughs> yes, we're good. We are brought to get ready to serve you guys. It's been a pleasure. We're going to put a little music on, and thank you guys so much. Danny, my brother Danny. Uh, that's one of my clients. A couple of my clients was here, and no one knows, but I own a barber shop as well. <laughs> many hats, many hats, many hats that come from a family of several hats. But I just want to say thank you guys. Um, can I get, let's see, I want one of the brothers to pray us out. Show me, God. Show me, show me, Father. Show me, Father. My brother on the back wall who I went to, Georgia, you mind praying us out? Yes, yes. Pray for the meal, brother, that we're about to have, yes. And we can go ahead and break bread and have some more fun. I look forward to spending more time with you guys. Thank you so very much again. Shalom, shalom. We're going to uh, heads bow, please. Dear Most Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Abba. We ask that you continue to bless us. We thank you for this gathering that we all come together to learn about our heritage, about our Father, Abba Father, hallelujah. We just thank you that we will continue to take this food that we learned, the spiritual food that we took in during the service, that we will go home and study and continue to meditate. And we ask that you bless this food that's prepared for us. We take away any periods if there be any, make it good and edifying to our bodies. We thank you in Yahushua Masha's name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Give them about a minute and a half, and then I'm going to start calling tables. First, I'm going to uh, Moray, because normally you always the last to get yours. You and your family is going to go first today. You and your family are going to go first today. Come on. Come on. Come on. You and your family are going to go first today. You said authority. <laughs> We're going to take care of this gentleman first. 
guys? What are kids? You guys go right behind them. This table right here. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. Please take your plates with you at the table. If you don't have any plates, I believe we have some more over there. Glad to see you, brother. Get a chance to come. Oh, 